So how much prison time have you served? Uh, well, unfortunately, here in Mexico, I ended up doing six years. Um, in the Philippines, I did almost a year as well. So in total, almost seven years. Which system was more brutal? Um, I'd say in the Philippines. I'd say in the Philippines. Here, it's really organized, and the cartels really control the prisons. And in the Philippines, it's more uh, the biggest, the baddest, you know, the most brutal wins. <laughs> what were you convicted of in the Philippines? Uh, I was playing a basketball game. And I was on a league, and the other league was police league that we were playing against. There were local police officers from Manila, and they were getting pissed because we were winning and started throwing elbows, and I kind of got physical back. And after the game, two Hondas intercepted me, black Hondas, and picked me up, took me to the police station, and they planted drugs on me. They planted three joints of weed. That's it. Wrapped in a plastic bag. But that was enough to threaten me with like 15 years there. So they were they had a lot of time to threaten me over my head. It was pretty ridiculous. How long did it take you to get sentenced? Oh, it took me about three months before I went from the, the main jail, the, the police station, the little jail, to the main jail. What was the police station like? Actually, that wasn't that bad because I had a couple friends who were also in the police in a, in a different department, and they were able to bring me food. And stuff while I was there, and cigarettes and whatever I needed, and, I, and they come and check on me and make sure no one was really fucking me, with me with the police. So that helped, that helped me out a lot. But as far as once I got to the the, the main jail, that all stopped because the, there wasn't visitation like that. I couldn't see anyone when I wanted. And is it gang controlled out there? Oh yeah, oh yeah, big time. And the gangs are politically involved as well. Actually, the leader of the main prison there in the Philippines was uh, running for Congress, I think. <laughs> No shit. No shit. <laughs> what are the names of the prison gangs in the Philippines? Uh, well, you got you got the the Brown Priders, then you got the 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 Pinoys. They call them the Pinoy first. So the that's the Pinoy is the t name Filipinos give themselves. And inside inside the the prison aren't they aren't the same guy as the gangs on the outside. On the outside, there's so many numerous Fili Filipino gangs. Another one that's really big in the prison and is big on the outside is T TRB, I think. And it's uh, True True Brown something, something like that. I'm not sure what it stands for, but they're big on the streets and in the prison. But the actual gang in the prison is, is controlled by the political figure that I said. So it's not like a gang with a name or anything. It's just like his, you could say his cartel. How did you fit into the gang mix in the Philippines? Um, well, when I was in the in the jail for the year I was there, everyone was actually really cool with me. I was lucky. I spoke the language, which helped me out a lot. Um, but as far as the gang mix, I tried to stay out of it as much as I could. There were times I had to get involved, like two or three times, where someone was threatening me or, you know, my manhood, like trying to come on to me and tell me that, that they're going to take something from me or they wanted my food or something like that. And just because I'm a yeah. white guy. I was going to sit down and take it, and you can't let that, because the first time you sit down you, and you're all over, everyone's going to step on you. So yeah. I have a scar here on my neck and here on my stomach where I got I, I got stabbed twice there. with like I, I don't know what it was because I didn't see it afterwards, but it was like an ice pick-like weapon because it, it looked like a round-type wound. Why did they stab you? I, I, was, I was using the bathroom, and they came up behind me, and he got me once in the neck, and I turned around, and he got me again in the stomach, and I... I managed to kick him in the chest, and I got him up against the wall, and I was lucky enough. I didn't go to the bathroom by myself. We'd go in pairs. So there was people outside that heard the scuffle, and they came in and helped me out. And he was just – it was a revenge off of another fight that I'd help someone out. It was just a revenge thing that I'd help someone out, and he got pissed because I made someone look bad. And they, in Asian countries, they have face. So if you make someone lose face, uh, they'll come after you for it. What was prison rape like, though? Was it prevalent? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Between them, it was extremely prevalent. Extremely. I'd say it's almost normal and accepted, uh, especially among like, if they see weaker inmates or things like that. They'll have them washing the floors or you'll see them cleaning people's shoes with toothbrushes. It's sad. It's sad. And did you see young people come in and get brutalized? Oh, of course. Are people going for little charges that like mine for three joints, you know, and they just aren't made for that life. Um, and it's sad because it makes them or breaks them, and usually it breaks them. Did you see anyone get murdered in the... Yeah, uh, yeah yes, yes, sir, I did. Yes, sir, I did. There was a couple of big fights where I was in, actually. Well, that, that I witnessed, I shouldn't say that I was in. I don't want to say that. 
Well, there was about 10 or 15 people killed at a time, actually, in one fight there. What? People were getting stabbed with broken off uh, mop handles. They were using them like spears. And the guards don't come inside the prison. They're not allowed. They just stay on the outside. So all the inside is controlled by the prisoners. So they're just there to take out the bodies. That's the bad thing. Holy shit. Make sure no one escapes. That's all they're that's all they're there for. What was your sleeping quarters like? Did you have a cell? Uh, I I had a cell and there was about eight bunks in it. So there's eight of us in the cell. And there are little tiny bunks. I didn't as I'm 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 about six foot three, so I didn't fit. I had to sleep with my knees bent. And did you get along with your cellmates? Yeah, I was lucky, man. I had I had some really cool cellmates there. And I'm still friends with them to this day. Um, and they, they, they really helped me and had my back, which saved me because I could have, it could have gone the, uh, the other way. And if I would have had bad cellmates, uh, I could have ended up a victim because when it's seven on one and you're closed up in a cell, there's not too much you can do. Wow. To eat in there, did you have to have food paid for, money send, people send money to you? Okay, so every day they'd give us one handful of rice and one dried fish. That's it. <laughs> Dried fish. I dry, it was a, and a handful of rice. Yeah, it was a salt dried fish that they dry in the sun with salt, so it doesn't go bad. <clears throat> and um, that's all the food they give us during the day. Is the commissary or anything? They have little restaurants and little stores and stuff in there. You can believe it. Um, so you can go buy your food in there and buy what you want to cook and eat and stuff. But as far as the jail providing. That all they give you is that handful of rice and the dried fish. So they aren't Did really people getting... send money in to you? Yes, yeah, people can send you money, but you don't want to do that too much because it, as a lot of people that are starving and it's a third world country, um, you can imagine having money would just paint a target on you. Being white, you're already you already have a target painted on you. So having money would be like double <laughs> double trouble. Wow. So and, and, the, and the gang rules, is it like in America? Where I was housed, you know, sex offenders kill on sight, stuff like that. There, no, there, no, there's not. You know, they they kill child rapists and rapists there, but they rape people in the prison. So it's kind of like in America, it's got that double standard. I think they do the same thing in the U.S. too. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. yeah, there is that kill on sight, but they also abuse people. So who, I don't understand it, but that's just how it is. What was an average day like for you in there? Were you able to work out, read, do anything? I'd wake up, I'd do 50 Navy SEALs. That's a, like a, a, a push-up we call it there. It's where you do one, one, one without the right leg, one without the left leg, one arm, one, you stand up. They call it the United yeah. States, they call it a burpee or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So we'd start off in the morning, we'd do like 50 of those. That's 150 push-ups because it's three in every one. And then we'd do our breakfast, we'd have our breakfast routine. And I like to play basketball. So we'd usually go play ball. And it's not like the United States where – you have this uh, an hour out or anything. They open your cell in the morning and you're out until the nighttime. So you're out all day. And I try to keep myself busy. I read a lot of books. I studied languages. I started picking up Spanish actually while I was there because yeah. I've always had interest in Spanish. <laughs> and uh, I just kept myself busy. And I was there about a year in, in full time. And it went, it went by really, really slow. 